At CES 2025, NVIDIA basically told us, hey guys, uh, the 5070 will be beating the 4090 in performance. All of us basically went, um, we don't think so, but now we have the car to test and we also want to know whether it's a real upgrade from the 4070 to the 5070. You'll be surprised at how much of a difference a year's worth of development can actually bring. Might not be a good surprise, but you'll be surprised. Let's talk about the tech and the specs that supposedly give 4090 level performance. There's a little asterisk floating around here. The new Blackwell architecture takes a weird turn by actually dropping over a thousand cores compared to the last generation. It sounds like a downgrade, I know, but that makes space for cranking up the power with the new fifth generation Tensor cores and the fourth generation AI cores. It's a strange choice, but the biggest difference I'm seeing is in AI performance, giving you an extra 420 tops. Kind of nice, right? But that's where NVIDIA's focus is clear for this generation, AI. It's less about the gamer and more about the AI enthusiast. And hey, I get it. That's where they're making their real money at the moment. But let's be honest, I don't know too many people who actually runs a AI model on their home PC. It's not exactly an everyday use case for most of us. I mean, we use ChatGPT from the air and we use Copilot. When are we gonna use iPhone's AI? Like in 2028? <laughs> well, we use AI sort of. Every day, kind of. NVIDIA says it's more about future games and technology. They're apparently working on neural shaders and processing, which could be the next ray tracing. Although if this demo of neural face generation is anything to go on, then uh, <laughs> yikes. Now, even though there are less cores, you're still gonna need 650 watts of power supply for this baby. It pulls a bit more juice than the previous generations. And well, that means more heat, but don't worry. I looked at the heat dissipation of this card and MSI literally went all in. This gaming trio is basically overkill when it comes to cooling, so you don't have to worry about that. The cool thing about having three seven blade fans instead of two is they don't have to spin as much, so they can be quite a bit more quiet, which is a good thing, especially if you're trying to play games without your wife knowing. It's for you and me, my guy. It's nice. It even says it on the box right there. Stay hard, play hard. Stay, stay hard, play silent. Dyslexia, <laughs> stay hard, play silent. <laughs> now, even though it is the lowest spec 50 series card that we currently get, um, it's still a beefy boy coming in at around three slots thick and 338 millimeters long. Exactly the same size as its bigger brother, the 5080. So if you're rocking one of those tiny ITX cases, Maybe look elsewhere, but let's be real here. In the era of fish tank case designs, do you really want a tiny, weak looking card in your rig? Nah, go for something that actually looks impressive. Do it, overcompensate, stay hard. <laughs> I mean, play hard. <laughs> now as for looks, MSI stuck with their gunmetal and black gaming trio series color scheme, but they added some cool detail. They've got this black translucent plastic that kind of hides the RGB when it's off. Don't worry, when the lights are on, it doesn't really affect the brightness. It even disperses the light quite nicely. And then there's this big shiny, almost pearlescent MSI dragon on the back. Nice touches. As with the previous gaming trio models, there is RGB, but it's still understated and refined. With sharp angles and textured surfaces, adding to the overall feel of this card. If this isn't your style though, MSI does have a ton of options. Everything from smaller dual fan Ventuses, Shadow Series, to the more premium Vanguard editions, which by the way, looks amazing too. Remember the 5080 video we made a week and a half ago? If you're interested, I'll leave the link below. All right, so it looks great, but what about performance? I know, that's what you're really here for. So let's dive into the benchmarks. Let's start with 1080p performance. Using the Ultra preset and testing without ray tracing or DLSS, the 5070 managed to peak 152 frames per second in Cyberpunk 2077, which is 6 FPS more than the 4070 Super, which hit 146 FPS. So while the 5070 does show a slight advantage here, it's not a huge leap. It's not 4090 type of leaps. 
Now, if you look at Ray Tracing Ultra and Ray Tracing Overdrive presets, the 4070 Super actually came out slightly ahead of those tests. The difference was minimal, but the 4070 Super did outperform the 5070, at least within the margins of error. So maybe 1080p just isn't where this 5070 shines. Maybe it'll show us what it's really capable of at 1440p. Unfortunately, not so much. The 5070 did marginally beat the 4070 Super in one of the three tests by a single frame per second. But in the other two tests, the 4070 Super actually pulled ahead again. So yeah, not exactly a clear victory for the 5070 yet. In Black Myth Hukong, the 5070 showed a bit more variation. The difference in FPS was relatively small though, with a maximum difference of 5 frames per second between the two cards. The 5070 managed to edge out the 4070 Super in some tests though, but it also fell behind in some other tests. It's not a consistent win across the board, to be quite honest. Overall, the 5070 did do better in our Monster Hunter Worlds benchmarks, most of the time, with the largest FPS difference of our testing so far. A massive 7 frames per second gap above the 4070. Super. And that's at 1440p high preset, with ray tracing turned off. So where do those big 4090 performance claims then really come in? I was asking that for NVIDIA. Honestly, I didn't really want to give it space in this video, but it seems like you can't avoid it. The 5070 was just built for AI. So we tested it out. DLSS is where it shines, especially, well, only in games that actually support DLSS 4. For example, with Cyberpunk 2077, settings maxed out at 1080p, the 5070 saw a 100 frames per second boost, going from 131 frames per second on the 4070 Super to 236 frames per second on the 5070. That's a noticeable jump between the two generations. At 1440p, we saw 69 frames per second differences which is a solid improvement, although not as dramatic as at the 1080p level. But again, that's only in games that support DLSS 4. In Black Myth, Hukong and Monster Hunter benchmarks, we only saw a slight difference in performance between the two cards. Look, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. NVIDIA's bold claim of 4090 performance, it's borderline illegal. It's not accurate at all. Even with DLSS 4 and its frame generation tech, it doesn't feel like a 4090, not even close. Yeah, the FPS numbers might look similar, but the actual gameplay experience, it's totally different. Trying to run Ray Trace Cyberpunk at 4K on this thing, it's not happening. It's just not a viable option on this card. So is this a bad card? Well, if you're not an AMD fan and considering that the 40 series has been discontinued, basically not available worldwide anymore, it's not a bad card, depending on where you're coming from. It's nowhere near as good as Nvidia promised it to be, but if you're upgrading from something like the 3070 or below, then what you're gonna get here is a fantastic, kind of affordable card. Just don't buy it at the current scalped prices. Just, just wait a little bit more. If you're coming from a console or buying a pre-built rig, it might be a solid entry point into PC gaming, if you can get it at a decent price in a few months from now. Just wait a little bit. It's basically a fancy AI version of the 4070 Super with some extra features. So that's it for today's video. I'd like for you to leave a comment below. I wanna chat about this card. I have mixed feelings to be quite honest and I think this is a great opportunity for you to give me your two cents. Let's, let's chat a bit. It's one of those videos. We're gonna need to chat it out. All right, this was Stefan from Tech. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, bye. And in the comment section below.